All right, so we'll start our part now. Okay, this is part two, um, pr probability for two mathematics. And um, let's look at um, calculating probability, okay? So now you've learned of a few words like sample space, okay, event. So how do you write probability? You write probability. <coughs> uh, one minute. Class will end when I finish the presentation. Is that okay? All right. When we are done with this question, we end our class. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Maybe in another 40 minutes, hopefully. So let's read this. If A is an event from a sample space, and what's the probability of A? Very simple. You just need to think of, if they ask you, what is the probability of something happening, an event happening, is literally the number of times it can happen and the total number of possible ways. Okay? Coming back to the rolling dice, it's the same thing. What is the probability of getting a prime number or an odd number? Three, right? Okay, odd number. So one, three, and five. What is the total possible outcomes? Six. Do you see that? There's nothing here too complicated, you know. It's the same thing, but it looks like it's so difficult. What is the N? N means always number. The N, three. A is that event. What is that event? Getting an odd number, getting a prime number, getting an even number. S is your sample space. All possible answers. Remember we did that just now? The sample space thingy. Okay, so now you understand what this little symbol means. Eh? N over N A, number of events of A over number of events in total. Do you understand this? This symbol, this this fraction here. It's literally a fraction. Can you see that? And what about the second part? They put a condition like that. How many of you all read this but don't understand what the crap is this? You have seen this, right? Do you understand what it means? This is your number line that I drew just now. Remember zero? Remember 50-50? Remember one? Remember that? So the probability, it's between, the values are between zero and one. That's it. It cannot be more than one. It cannot be less than zero, like negative numbers or what. No, it doesn't make sense already then. You understand? So the probability of an event lies everything between zero and one. That is what these, like it's a condition, you know. Every time you read a question and they will put that at the back. If you ever notice it, I don't know. So next time when you see this, you'll be aware. Oh, this is what the meaning is. The probability is either going to be between the values between 0 to 1. Do you understand? With half, which is 0 0.5 being 50-50. Everything else is in between. It's either less likely or more likely. Got it? All right. So these are all the little things, you know, that you have that sometimes you overlook, but you must be aware now. I think you should, would be after this. Let's look at question, guys. I know I'm going a bit fast. Just bear with me. Look here. The table shows the number of balls. Now we do want all that the rolling dice, you know, silly billy experiment. Let's go to bigger ones. The table shows the number of balls of different colors in a bag. A ball is chosen randomly. Again, the keywords here are always random. Random means they don't look. Oh, I want red color ball, so I'm going to pick purposely red color. No. Random means you don't look at it. You just close your eyes and pick, or the bag is black. You cannot see anything. You just randomly pick. That's random. And can you see? Red, there are 48 balls. Yellow, 32 balls. Blue, 45 balls. So surely, there's not an equal probability here. Are you listening? Following? Sure. You understand? So now they're asking me to calculate the probability of getting a red ball. Very simple. How many red balls are there? 48. Correct? But how many balls are there all together? That's the big question. Because that's your sample space. You understand now? Can I have the total there? 48 plus 32 plus 45? What's the total? Very good. One, two, five. Now use your lovely calculator and get me a number on this. 
So it's 48 divided by 1 to 5, not 1 to 5 divided by 48. Okay, so Gloria, correct. So what's this, guys? And if it's a decimal, just tell me a decimal. It's three digits, no problem. 0 0.384. I hope you know what is 0 0.384. Huh? 384 over 1,000. Do you understand? Okay, so this is the probability of getting a red ball. 0. Point. Or if I want to change this later to percentage, I just times 100 and I'll say, oh, I got a 38% chance. Do I make sense now? 38% chance of getting a rate. In decimal, it's 0 0.384. In fraction, it's 384 over 1,000. You see, I've given you all three numbers now. What about the calculate the probability of getting a blue ball? Now, you do and tell me. So this should be, again, 45. Blue ball is 45 over the same total. It didn't change, guys. But next year, in Form 3, it will change. You know, we play games, right? Sometimes the balls go out of the bag. Sometimes the balls get added into the bag. These all stories can happen. Eh? So be prepared. You do this well, then the other things in the future will be easy. Very good. It's 0 0.36. Get me all in uh, decimals. It's easier. Okay? And if they ever want to convert to fraction, then it's 36% of chance of getting a blue ball. Okay? And this 36 is 36 over 100. It's also the same as 360 over 1,000, in case you didn't know. If you want to compare everything, this is 360, this is 384. This will be 400. don't know how much, but this will be the highest, in fact, the blue balls. Because, no, 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 sorry, sorry, red would be highest probability. See, 38%. So, 36%. Okay, yellow would be the least probability and how can i even calculate yellow quickly i'll just take 100 now guys you just do this experiment with me take 100 percent like 100 minus 38 percent so minus 38 and minus 36 what do we get do that quickly with your calculator 100 minus 38 minus 36 so i'm just working with percentages here what do we get Twenty-six percent. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna double check whether this is correct or not. Now on your calculator, press thirty-two yellow balls over hundred and twenty-five. What do you get? Thirty-two. Very good. You get zero point two five six. You round it off zero point two six. Can you see that now? Maths can never go wrong. Which means if you add 0 0.384 plus 0 0.256 plus 0 0.36, you add up all these probabilities, what's going to be your answer? Who can quickly get that? It will surely be what? If I add up all the probabilities, all these decimal numbers, you really need to do that, May? Don't you see that you will get to 1? Because 1 is the complete whole probability. Are you following me? You don't believe me? Try. 0 0.384 plus 0 0.256 plus 0 0.36, the one for blue. You add up. You surely touch. You surely land at 1. Because the total of all probabilities must be 1. Got it? Okay, clear? Good. Let's go to the next question then. Okay. Let's say mother told you, go buy eggs. You go and like, you went to the market, you bought 30 eggs, but you broke four eggs. Maybe it's not rotten, maybe it's broken. What's the probability of choosing a rotten egg? Now your mother comes back and she cooks eggs, one egg and it's a rotten egg. What's the probability of that? So you see, this is our event already, you know? So it's four. Out of a total of? 30 eggs. And what's that? The probability. How much is that? Very good. 0 0.14. That's it. The probability is 0 0.14. Do you understand? And if this is as a decimal. If I want to change it into a fraction, I'll just take in my times 100%. Then that would be 14%. Am I right? That means out of my 30 eggs... Okay, all right, four eggs are rotten. 26 eggs are good. 
Am I right? Four eggs are rotten. 26 eggs are good. And these four eggs represent about 14% of my total 30 eggs. So what is the percentage of the good eggs? You just take 100% minus 14%. What's that? What's the percentage of the good eggs? 86. What is the probability of getting good eggs? 0 0.86. Can you see that now? 30 is our quantity. The 0 0.14 and 0 0.86 is our probability. Do you understand now? Okay. All right. I think you do. I hope you do. Okay. Let's go to the next question then. Oops, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here. Now I want you to think. Hey, Siddharth, you have been literally very quiet and not answering. Please answer my question. Read this question now, Siddharth. A container has... Do that now. A container... Quickly. Oh, no mic. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, answer in the chat then. A container has cards numbered from 5 to 20. Read carefully. It's not 1 to 20. It's 5 to 20. Okay, always read your questions very carefully. A card is chosen randomly. That means you know lah. They close their eyes and they choose. Okay, all right. They never cheat. Okay, calculate the probability of a card. See, eh? now the condition is coming, you know. With a factor of 32. My goodness. First of all, what is your sample? Your sample is from the cards numbered 5 to 20. Now, if you want to write it out, you can do 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because I want to do my sampling. I want to see what's my sample, all my possible answers. You must put a equals, put a bracket, okay? 11, 12, it's not too much. You can surely write it out. 13, 14, 15, do this, huh? 16, I mean, in your exam, lah, 17, 18, 19, and 20. This is my sampling space, my sample space. You understand? And what is my N? Do you remember your N? What is N? Huh. Tell me what's the N. I'm asking the question. You tell me the answer for that only. This is my sample space. What is my N? That means how many numbers do I have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Can you see that? Where did you get 16 from? Did I count wrongly? Let me recount again. Okay, 5. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You are right, Fatin. So my N is 16. Okay, I miscounted. So... You see that? Are you following me? Now, the next is the event. Now, my event is what? I want to pick out a card. I want to take out what's the probability of a card. But it has with a factor of 32. Guys, this goes back to some mathematical knowledge of yours with regards to factors. Do you remember what is factors? Factors are numbers that you can divide with. For example, 32 can surely be divided by 2. We start with that, okay? Can 32 divide by 4? Can or not? Yeah, can. All right, can 32 be divided by 5? Cannot. Can 32 be divided by 6? Cannot. 7? Cannot. 8? Can or not? 8, 16, 24, 32? Can. Can you see? This is how you list out your factors. I hope you remember this. Can now tell me more factors? Can 9 be divided? Is 9 a factor of 32? Cannot. No, it's not a factor. Is 10 a factor of 32? No. 11? No. 12? No. 13? No. 14? 14 plus 14 is 28. It's not a factor. So 15? No. 16. Does it ring a bell? Can, right? 32 divided by 16. So 16 is a factor of 32. Got it? 
And then once you reach half, that's it, game's almost over. The last factor will be 32 itself. Do you remember? You start with one, like actually, yeah? one. And then this is the first and the last, right? But look at this sample of hours. It starts with five. So two and four is not even in the game. You understand? And 32 already over already our sample. So we can't even take 32. So we have only eight and 16. Where did we get nine from, Gloria? I don't think nine is a factor for 32. Nine, 18, 27, 36. Got it? So we have only eight and we have 16, which means our probability is only two events out of 16 possible numbers or possible outcomes here. And that simplifies to 1 over 8. And if you want to write it as a decimal, 0 0.125. Do you understand this question now? So sometimes the event can be a little complicated. That's all. But if you know your maths well, you shouldn't have a problem finding what are the factors for 32. You see that? Here, yeah, the probability knowledge is simple, but it can become tricky because they're asking you about factors of 32 instead of odd, even kind of num questions. They want other simple questions. Like they ask you, you form two, right? You must use your brains a bit, isn't it? When you form three already. So they ask you more challenging questions like factors of 32. Uh, so you must now list down all the factors of 32. See which one is in your set in your sample space, okay? Clear. Let's go on to the next question. Hope I'm not too fast. All right, I think this is the last part already. Tick, 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 tick. Am I good? Well, the last part of your lesson is finding the complement of an event. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'll give you a simple example. You play football. The chances of you winning is 0 0.6. You win. Okay? What is the opposite of winning? What's the opposite of winning, guys? Hey, what's the opposite of winning? Losing. So if this is 0 0.6, this will be how much? Very good. 0 0.4. Now, does the two probability add up to 1? 0 0.6 plus 0 point, does it make sense? Does it make add up to 1? And that's exactly what we are talking about. Complements means whatever that's not going to happen. So all the outcomes in the space that are not the of event A. So the event is you winning. That is A. What is not A, the complement of A, which is losing, is written like this. It's like the probability of the a not happening. So they put like a little dash on top, like a you know, like symbol here. Can you understand or not? When you see this means it's a complement, an event that is not going to happen. But it's common sense, right? Now you know the one's gonna happen and the one's not gonna happen. If I add them up, I'm surely gonna get one. That's the rule. Do you understand? Because the total probabilities of everything is one including the one that's going to happen and the one not going to happen. Make sense? Okay, now we go to algebra. If somebody asks you, lah, A plus 7 equals to 10. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If somebody asks you, uh, 7 plus 3 equals to 10, correct? And then they ask you to find only, okay, like, let's not bring this example. Okay, let's not waste time with this. Okay, I think you guys can understand what I'm talking here also already. Let's go to here. This equation says probability of A plus the probability of A not happening is 1. So sometimes they just give you the probability of A. They will ask you to find the probability of A not happening. So what must you do? Like the probability of A not happening, you take 1 minus the probability of A happening. You understand? In some questions, they'll give you the probability of A not happening. And they ask you to find what is the probability of A happening. This is just like finding unknown. 
They'll give you this. They'll ask you to find this. They'll give you the one, the one you should already know. So they'll either give this information and ask you to find the probability of this, or they'll give you this one. They ask you to find the probability of the event happening. Do I make sense? Do you understand how I get this and this? It's like almost algebra. Gloria, Fatin, Sidat, do you understand what is this about? Okay, so let's go to questions. I think question makes more sense. Okay, but this question is a little bit more complicated. Lah. Okay, so let's read this. I think I got two or three more questions only. Lah. God, lah. okay, but let's see. The first batch of yeah, yeah. This is already like section two question, you know? So panjang. Actually, it's panjang because I skip space. Okay? And it's also big. So the first batch of printed newspapers has 5,000 copies. Okay lah. You imagine you are the boss of a company. Eh? This newspaper company, you print 5,000 copies. But from that batch, 200 copies, you select, you know, you want to check for quality. Can you understand the story? It's just the story is very long. But the important part is 200 copies have been selected randomly. Ah, the word random is important. To what? To check for quality. And then there they found three of them, the three, are not up to the standard quality. That means out of 200 copies, uh, three is out. It's like rotten or not quality. No, no good quality. Lah. Okay. So question is, find the number of copies that are expected not to achieve the standard quality. Now, what about the 5,000 batch? If this little sample of ours has this kind of rotten magazines, what about the 5,000 then? You see how probability comes into real life? This is so real. How do I find the probability of these magazines being of inferior quality or no standard quality? Uh, that is my event. What is the probability of the magazines having no quality? Can you tell me that first? So how many magazines came up without good quality? Three, right? And how? what was our sampling? We took from a sample of 200. Well, that is the selected sample, correct? So this is our probability of magazines that are not up to the standard quality. This is our event. You understand or not? So what is this? What is the what is the answer here? Can I have your answer in the chat, please? What is 3 divided by 200? What's the probability here? Hello, guys. Did you know how to use a lot of the brain institutions in the calculator? Quickly, quickly, quickly. 3 divided by 200, 0 0.015. Can you see that? That's a number. Isn't that a number more than one, uh, more than zero and less than one? So it's a, it's a valid answer, correct? Now, what about our 5,000 copies? How many numbers are expected to not achieve that quality? So the answer would be, take your probability, what your answer for the probability, and multiply with whatever your quantity is. So your quantity here is 5,000. That's right, Gloria. So what's your probability? Probability 0 0.015. That's your, that's your like your ratio, you know. It's like ratio, right? Uh, 0 0.015. If I want to change this into percentage, what will I say? 1.5%, correct? 1.5% of these magazines are going to be rotten. So if there are 5,000 magazines, what will you do? You'll take the 1.5% times, isn't it? Uh, and how will you write 1.5%? 1 1.5 over 1,100. And that is 0 0.015. Again, coming back to this, times 5,000. And yes, answer 75 magazines. Don't go put percentage all, okay? You must know what you're doing. Do I make sense? Do you understand this question now? Okay. All right. Good job. Let's move on then. Okay. Now, look at this. The diagram shows three number cards. Here, three, five, and seven. 
two number cards are chosen. You look at the condition and they tell you two number cards are chosen at random by a student. Which of the following is the possible outcome? Can that student get just three? Yes or no? Already the question say two cards are chosen and you just give me one answer. Surely la, this is wrong. Two cards are chosen. Why you give me three answers here? Surely this is wrong. Yes or not? So sometimes logic itself can answer question. So you could get three and five. You could get five and seven. Yes or not? So this is our possible outcome. And what are these? Two and three. So choose the option two and three. Done. Don't make life so complicated. You see, it's so easy. Okay? Two cards. Read the question. Two cards. They didn't say one card. They didn't say three cards. So your option, your sample space must have two values. Be careful. Okay? All right? So this is definitely not in the game, not in the game. Eliminate. So you see answer one, wrong. You see answer one, wrong. You see answer four, wrong. And this is the correct answer. Okay, done. Next question. Okay, life is pretty easy. Actually, probability is so fun. Okay, all right. Let's do this. A box contains 14 balls. Four of them are blue. So it's Mila. What's the ball taken out? It's not blue. Ah, you remember complimentary? You remember complementary? So 14 are blue. Three diagram. Four, sorry, 14 balls are there. Four are blue. That means 10 are not blue. Make sense now? So what's the probability of this? It's 10 out of 14. And that one simplifies to become what? Very good. Five out of seven. Are you following? Now, Two out of seven is a possible answer. Five out of seven is the correct answer. Seven out of two and seven out of five is definitely not a correct answer. Why? Why is seven out of two and seven out of five? I look itself, I know it's a wrong answer. Why? It comes back to that first thing I taught you about probability. Why? Because these fillers are more than one. Yes or not? Seven over five is more than one. What do you learn about pro uh, proper fraction in proper fraction? Seven over two is the same as three, one over two. Remember mixed numbers? Seven over five is the same as one, two over five. These are numbers are all more than one. Probability has to be less than one. Do I make sense now? Do you can you connect fractions? Oh, improper fraction, improper fraction. There's no place for improper fraction here. We are dealing all improper fractions. Got it? Faham ke? If you faham, you give me a yes or something like that, please. Okay. So many things are just interrelated with your basics. That's why basics so important. Okay. Next question. Afik buys, I hope I'm not too fast, huh? Afik buys five blue pens, ten black pens, three red pens. So now I'm going to teach you something called tree, tree diagram, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide into five, so black, oh sorry, blue pens out of the all the pens here, okay? And then ten would be black. Okay, you can draw like this huh, in the exam. Huh? Don't say cannot all. And then we have red. Red got how many? Three. So what is the total pens? You must always do that. So a total five plus 10 plus three. How much is that? 18. So 18 is our big number we must calculate. Now I know this is like ratio. This is like fraction. A pen is drawn at random. Calculate the probability of getting a black. Okay, we are looking at black now. So... 10 over 18. That's it. Simplify. What do you get? See, it's a proper fraction. Can you see that? 5 over 9. Okay, over here, all of them are proper fractions. So, I wouldn't know yet until I calculate. What's the probability of getting a blue? 5 out of 18. Can you see that? What's the probability of getting a red? 3 out of 18. And of course, I can simplify this as 1 over 6. 
So the answers are there, but they are not for black. Are you following? Okay. So far, so good. This question, boleh buat? Okay. All right. I hope so lah. Okay, these are all simple questions that can come out. Okay, this is the last part of our lesson. I think so. Let me see. Ah, yeah. Last question. Okay, happy? Now, why lah? Oh my God, please. <laughs> Gloria, trust me. This is the fun part of probability. The best part of it. Okay? Like the last piece of it. It's called double probability. All right? Ah, it's it's one event happening and then another event is happening after that. So what kind of probability is that then? Something happened and something else is happening. So you use the tree diagram to do this. Okay, so what happens here is there are two events that are happening now. So let's read. read. The diagram shows, or the below shows a few cards in two boxes. Box P, box Q. Box P has cards labeled A and B. Box Q has cards labeled 7, 8, and 9. So a card is drawn at random. Again, you close your eyes, pick out a card. From each box, complete the tree diagram. So first of all, from box P, let me ask you, what are the choices of cards that you have? If you're going to look at box P. You only can get A or you can get B. Yes or not? So your choice is either A or B. Let's say I blindfold you. Lah, okay, I'm going to ask you to pick a card. So you're going to choose A. After that, I take you to box B. And I ask you to still again choose one of the cards. You could get seven, you could pick eight, or you could pick nine. Am I right? So after choosing A, you can also go to seven. You can also go and choose eight, or you can also go and choose nine. That happens at box Q. Now, if you chose B, let's say you happen to choose B, you go to box Q then, again, you can choose seven. Again, you can choose eight. Or again, you could choose the card nine. Now, what could be the possible outcomes? The possible outcome is somebody would have chosen maybe A7. Somebody could have chosen A but with the number eight. Somebody could have chosen A with the number nine. Somebody else could have chosen B with the number seven. Somebody could have chosen B with the number eight. Somebody could have chosen B with the number nine. Now, if I asked you, uh, is there a possibility of A6? Is it even in the game here to begin with? Is there a six here? No, certainly not. Do you see that? So these are all our possible answers. You'll be glad eh, that they even teach you up to this because next time it's going to be calculate the probability of this, 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 this. You understand? At this point, you just join this up and understand this as a tree diagram. Got it? There's more to this. Do one calculation. Oh, this calculation is super easy. Actually, the only thing you're going to do here is multiply. That's all. You have a probability here. Correct? You have the probability here. You multiply both, you'll get the answer here. Done. That I taught you already. Okay? <laughs> That's all. Let's all. Let's say I change this question. Okay, I clear all. And I say, the probability of A is 0 0.3. I'm giving you some numbers here. And this is 0 0.7. So we're going to write here 0 0.3, right? And this is 0 0.7. I'm giving you probability, possible answers. And this one, I put the probability 0 0.1, probably 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So this is 0 0.1 again, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. Are you following? Again, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So instead of the A, B, and the 7, 8, 9, I'm giving you probabilities. Because probabilities are numbers from zero up, more than zero, less than one. All this is more than zero, less than one. How do I calculate this? Take your calculator, take 0 0.3 times 0 0.1. What do you get? Very good, 0 0.03. Done. What is 0 0.3 times 0 0.2? 0 0.06. 
Correct? What is 0 0.3 times 0 0.4? Isn't that 0 0.12? Am I right? Yes or not? Excuse me, help me do the calculation here. Yes. Again, now please do this. 0 0.7 times 0 0.1. How much is it? 0 0.07. What about 0 0.7 times 0 0.2? 0 0.14. Am I right? Please uh, do the calculation. Uh. How about 0 0.7 times 0 0.4? 0 0.28. I got down all this probability, right? Now take that calculator and total up all this. What do you get? Uh, you end the, our class with this. Take that calculator and total up all this. To show me that match is 100% accurate. Wait, how can you get 0 0.7? Something went wrong then. Really, May? Yaka, Fatin. Hmm, yes, okay, confirm. Okay, lah. never mind, lah. I'll accept your answers, okay? All right, so with that, we end our session today, okay? So far, so good. Do you understand whatever you have learned today? But to your textbook or your school extent, I think your idea is just to understand that two events are happening and you can join them up, all right? That's all, complements of an event. Okay, all right, and this is about it. That's all. Um, I hope you could understand these questions here. And uh, with that, I end my class for today. I can give you some extra notes. That's up to you. Okay, you can use it. You can do some questions, but they are all from foreign country resources. But I tell you for now, I think you just do your revision books. Okay, that should be fine. All the best for your exams.